there's two there's two areas I think uh, that music placement has become important. One is obviously money. You can't download a sync license for free or get it off LimeWare. You actually have to pay. And um, then there's also a little tighter control on the back end, meaning performance following. Not for movies, but for, you know, uh, play on media. But um, the other aspect is promotion. And so I think for an indie artist, I mean, for them to get uh, enough play on a uh, radio or whatever, it, it might take forever, but I think the case has been made, you know, Grey's Anatomy and a million other shows where a band breaks because they've been seen and it's the right music at the right time. So that opportunity is fabulous. There is something going on right now, and what that is, there, it's not the same fees at the end of the day. Uh, in fact, there's heated debates on this, and it's uh, on both sides of the issue. And I take the points on both sides. And I was at a a, um, a panel, and I saw uh, two gentlemen. One was from a major publishing company, and one was from, let's say, a not major publishing company. And that one guy was saying, "Well, I'll give my music away for free to promote my band," and the other guy said, "Well, you're killing us by doing that." And what's happened, and unfortunately this is just part of what's happened in music, is that it has been devalued. It's called value migration is the, the basic term for it. And um, when budgets get cut, sync fees get cut. And they probably won't go back up, except for, um, in the rare case where it's something, you know, there's only one... Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze. If you want Jimi Hendrix doing Purple Haze, you got to pay for that. And maybe you can create things like that and those things will become valued. Otherwise, it's commoditized. I talked to a music supervisor the other day who works for a major show and she said it's just like a, a bag. I can just stick my hand in there and just pull one out. There are so many great bands unsigned, signed to indie labels, whatever. The other bag she can draw from is with major labels and major publishers. She didn't go there. <laughs> she didn't have the budget. And that's her telling me this. It's so, if she's saying this, that's what dictates the market. But another side issue to this, which is kind of maybe, that's the financial side, but a kind of interesting side is that I found, is that music supervisors are now the new A&R people. And they're tastemakers. And they... Um, they want the buzz band, or they want the new breaking band, and they're always looking for this. So it's kind of like it's the new radio, what people say. And I think it's an interesting, uh, I don't know if it'll remain this way, but it's definitely, um, it's been a game changer.